my time here in Swansea is coming to an end. Um, and I've learned some lessons. I've learned some lessons, man, that's for sure. The most important one is uh, to stick to the process. I have a, back, my old self had a very hard time adjusting to the day. I always thought if the day, if the day didn't go my way, I said fuck it and I was in a bad mood. Um, now as a God first person, God first individual, as a Christ centered individual, as my, as, as a rebirth, my new life in Jesus, where I pray and I, I pray for guidance and I adhere to his teachings. Um, I've learned to, uh, to calm down. I learned to calm down and, uh, take it with ease man and honestly couldn't have done it without my wife these there's people out there that they swear that can they can do it by themselves it's pride right they, they're they have a lot of pride this is me i did it all by myself never once considering their, those people around them you know their wife their parents their boyfriend their girlfriend their brother their sister friends whoever has been there there for them on their way up on their way to be a better person it's not even moving up in class or socioeconomic class like i've always preached you know now that i'm very deep into my um christ uh first lifestyle christ-centered life um i've learned that it's more about the relationships that you build and the number one relationship is the one you have with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the number one relationship. But in speaking about the beautiful bond that I have with my wife, and I feel that everyone in the world should be coupled. We are meant to be coupled. The problem is finding that special someone. And that special someone could be someone you least expected, like me. You know, um, like my wife and I, some that we didn't, we never planned. We never like, we just got to know each other. You know, that's all it was. And um, as time has gone on, we've been together 15 years. And as time has gone on, um, we've been closer and closer to Christ. We've been getting closer and closer to Christ. She was baptized about eight years ago and um, as a Catholic and without me telling her anything she just wanted to do it herself it was christ calling her christ calling her no one influenced her not her parents um who uh the mom you know she's i don't know if she's atheist but she's definitely not a uh, christian you know her dad is not a practicing catholic um my dad was a practicing catholic but you know didn't influence her this way or that way or nothing you know my parents are the type that do you right and neither did my mom. So she did it on her own. Not on her own. Through Christ. And this was during a time when I wasn't as close to Christ as I am now. This was, this was uh, during a time where I was still drinking heavily. I was still getting in fights, you know. Uh, that's a part of, of, of me that you guys don't know. But I see getting into street fights all the time. Um, I had a short temper. You know, I was quick to snap uh in public and um you know um i was still doing all that and then um seeing her passion how she was just getting closer to christ you know um it motivated me because i've always had um god in in my mind in my heart in my soul in my spirit i would always pray you know i would i would go to church i would read the bible but i was being a hypocrite in that even though i was doing all that i wasn't practicing what god was telling me to practice that voice that you, that you hear is god's voice your 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 um the holy spirit is in you your conscience is was guiding you you know and that's the holy spirit working through you and you know when you're not supposed to do something and i will still do it and that was a problem that i would still do it and now i don't and now what i've noticed is that my wife and i have a a third partner 
we have a third person in the relationship and that's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ it's us three and we've developed such a good bond we worship together every morning and when you're so connected with God like you feel the Holy Spirit when you're in the room guys it feels so good it's just a feeling that I can't even describe it's just warm it's just beautiful man it really is and he loves worship is active is that worshiping is an active battle against the devil the devil hates that you know but the devil doesn't have a chance <laughs> it's beautiful when you live your life knowing that the devil doesn't have a chance it's beautiful when you start living your life knowing that you're not afraid of hell you're not afraid of hell what you're afraid of is losing that love for jesus for jesus christ he'll never stop me but you losing that love of jesus christ like the my biggest fear is losing the presence of the holy spirit that's why i don't mess up you know i like being guided and then i like being doing what i'm supposed to and seeing the the benefits they're seeing the rewards everything all the benefits of living a christ first lifestyle man. i keep seeing it day in and day out and this was the perfect example i we came here to swansea i was so disillusioned um the this what you see here wasn't here almost it, it almost went back as far as you see those uh, boats over there almost not quite i'll say it went about a mile deep it was all barren there was no no one here i was like what did we come to you know why why did we come here and it started too because of our hotel our hotel was being super misleading um with the with the photos that they had so marriott if you're watching thumbs down for that um and then little things like the gym not being in service and you guys know me man i can't function without my gym you know that's I need it. I need it. That's what I do first thing in the morning after worshiping. I'm gonna start recording my worship sessions and my and my me reading the Bible, so you guys can see what a God first lifestyle is really about. You know, it's simple. You just gotta put it into practice. And so everything was wrong, right? And so I I, I brought my wife and I, I sat. I said, baby, we gotta pray about this. You know, we gotta sit down and we gotta pray. You know, and let's ask for guidance. And I sat there and I said. You know, Father Lord, show me what you want me to do. Father Lord, if you don't want me here, let me know. Father Lord, if you want me here, let me know. I'm just going to do what you want me to do. Um, and then we went upstairs and, you know, I, I read some. I, there's some people that I follow on uh, YouTube. Uh, I follow a prophet uh, who, who's very good, guys. Her name is Daniela Oyaga, which I recommend you guys uh, go check out. And, um, you know, she, she spoke, uh, whew, she spoke a, a message that got me, um, it got me uh, teary eyed for sure. Um, and it was a message about trust. It was about trusting God's plan for you. And so then uh, my wife is like, well, why don't we go get some bikes, get some bicycles, you know? And I was like, yeah, I mean, I was still angry and moody. Cause I get moody guys I get I get moody when things don't go my way and so I was like yeah let's try it and so then we came we came down here I kid you not oh my lord and savior it was 45 minutes because we got one of those uh rent -a bikes where you you know type in a code or whatever those Santander bikes if you're European you know what I'm talking about you type in a code and then you could just take off with them and um it wouldn't work so we had to call them and we had to be on the phone with them and they gave us instruction on what to do and what they were telling us wasn't doing and i was my frustration started building and it was getting to the point where i was getting angry so now i just i just listened to the holy spirit and the holy spirit told me walk away so i walked away and i left my wife there by herself dealing with the problem i was still i still had an eye on her but i just walked away and then i just basically lay down in the grass and i started praying started praying started praying started praying and then my wife fixed the problem <laughs> and that's what i was trying to say about being coupled about the importance about men men listen the importance of you bringing your wife 
to Jesus. Bring your wife to Jesus. You know, bring her to uh, for prayer. Bring her for worship. Bring her to talk about God. Bring her to tell good stories about God. You know, like just bring her to Jesus. It is our responsibility to bring our wife to Jesus. And when you have a good wife, a good girlfriend that is as Christ-centered as you, guess what? When you're not doing fine, when you're not doing well, you know, her grace is going to save you. This is a perfect example. And it's not the first time that it's happened, guys. This is not the first time, you know, her grace has helped us out. The grace, ooh, look at that. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. That was him going, boom. Emphasizing the point that, yeah, man. You guys that are married man oh my god work on your marriage guys it is active like you have to be act you have to be an active participant in your marriage you know don't just your, your marriage is not like it's not like just sitting and watching tv man it's not bsing with your buddies you know like a marriage is work but it's beautiful work guys because like i said we are meant to be couple we are meant to be couple man and we only fall out of grace when we start listening to those devil voices, those demon voices. Could be a bad friend, could be um, something on TV, could be the news, could be music, dude. Do you guys know how bad music influences you, man? Oh. It influences you, subconsciously it influences you. So we gotta watch out for things like that, man. And we always, just let Jesus Christ influence you. That's it. That's your one and only influencer. Everybody else is BS. Everybody else, because everyone else is human. They have ulterior motives. They're, um, you know, they, they want to sell you something, you know, so all that. I don't even want to get into it because that's not what this is about. It's about you bringing your, your um, wife to Jesus, trusting the process. Her grace will save you and vice versa. Sometimes they may not up they may be struggling, you know, and because there's been times when my grace has saved uh, a situation. I saved my wife from going down a, a road of uh, of discouragement. You know, that happens a lot to women. You know, you, they get discouraged, you know, with um, work. They get discouraged with things in, in their life, you know, with a family member. You know, they get discouraged a lot. And that's when our grace, you know, can come in and help. You know, and grace is that, that, that peace, that calm, that serenity. Grace is so beautiful, guys. And we can only, we can only get grace through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, this was um, just a, a quick um, YouTube video to tell you guys how things are, man. Um, this is the Holy Spirit speaking through me, you know. I, I, I pray for, for um, guidance. Every time I pray for guidance, I pray... Um, for the Holy Spirit to be to, to help me give the right message out there because I really think that the world needs to hear it. Um, we're getting closer to uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ coming back, the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and I believe it will happen in our lifetime. Um, it may not, but it's good to be ready because even if He doesn't come while we're here on earth, you still want to go to heaven. Why do I, I don't want, I'm, I'm not saying I want to go to heaven because I'm afraid of hell. Like I said, I'm not afraid of hell, of hell because I know I'm not going to go there. You know, I'm actively working here on earth. This is a trial, guys. This is, you were put on this earth as a test. And the, in the, in the realm of time, this is how small, it's a grain of salt, our time here on earth. All right. And it's all a test, man. So I ain't, I ain't afraid of, of going to hell. No serene, man, because I do active work. Active work, spiritual work, so that I can go to heaven. And why do I don't want to go to heaven? Man, because I want to be with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to see the Father. You know, I want to feel that love that I feel here on earth. If I feel his love here on earth so deeply and it's so warm and so loving and so tender, I can only imagine how heaven will be. So, yeah, there you go, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this message, man. And uh, stay tuned for more.